In the 1920s, surgeon Serge Voronoff became rich via an early form of hormone therapy, transplanting monkey testicles into human scrotums, a method called hormone rejuvenation. Beginning around that same time, doctors attempted to cure gay men with testosterone, a chemical produced in the testes that helped maintain men's structural anatomy. When testosterone didn't work, they attempted to cure those same men with estrogen, the female counterpart of testosterone. When estrogen also failed as a cure, it was administered as a punishment as it would enhance feminine features despite being injected into a male body. A victim of this punishment was Alan Turing, the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence, whose success in military communication was central to Allied success in World War II. He was arrested for homosexual acts and given the choice of estrogen treatments or prison. Turing is the best known, but far from the only gay man to have been chemically castrated. This process gained its name due to its side effects of estrogen, such as shrinking the penis and drastically reducing sperm count, making it impossible to reproduce. He committed suicide when his breasts began to grow as a result of the hormone transfer. While Dr. Serge Voronoff's practice was used in cruel ways, it paved the way for future transgender treatment options. In 1949, San Francisco physician Harry Benjamin pioneered the use of those hormone therapy options in treatment of transgender patients. Benjamin was interested in sexual identity, believing it was possible for individuals to feel as if they were born in the wrong body. Doubtful that mental illness or any psychopsychosis could make anyone feel that way, Benjamin advocated for hormone therapy and surgery to help transgender people live their true gender. Yet despite Harry Benjamin's breakthroughs and medical advancements towards gender reassignment surgery, the practice was still known to some, but hated by most. That was until Stanley Biber became a household name. Stanley Biber became the most well-known gender physician throughout the United States. While starting his career as the only general surgeon in Trinidad, Colorado at Mount San Rafael Hospital, Dr. Biber soon became a medical phenomenon. Stanley Biber came to Trinidad after working in a MASH unit during the Korean War. In a 1997 videotape talk, Biber said that was his main qualification for being a sex change surgeon. I'm just an old country doctor. <laughs> Just an old general surgeon who learned all his cosmetic work in the army and, you know, and uh, have applied it ever since. In 1969, a local social worker who preferred to not provide a last name and simply only went by Anne approached him. She had asked Dr. Biber to perform her surgery. After conversating with the young woman, Dr. Biber found out that the social worker was really a man who had been undergoing hormone treatments that softened the skin, redistributed fat, and caused breasts to develop in preparation for what was called a sex change operation. After seeking medical advice from Dr. Harry Benjamin, as well as examining hand-drawn diagrams sent to him from John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore that detailed the procedure for transforming a man's genitals into a woman's. Biber performed his first sex change operation in Mount San Rafael Hospital, which was initially run by Catholic nuns. Dr. Biber hid his first few surgical files in a safe, in fear of the word getting out. However, as soon as he realized that this would become what he became known for, he soon became public. Dr. Biber gave the local ministerial alliances a series of three lectures in which detailed what the surgery was and the physiology behind the patients. The city of Trinidad soon got on board with the idea, but not everyone. Dr. Biber recalled in an interview with the Times that he was initially ostracized by some doctors due to their understanding that the individuals were suffering from psychiatric problems that could be fixed through hormone therapy. Dr. Biber accounted for this and in procedural letters would state the psychiatric evaluations one must go through before the procedure can take place. Dr. Biber's name spread throughout the country as he would perform these surgeries with absolutely no judgment to the patients, even despite their occupation. Dr. Biber revealed that he had performed this operation on politicians, actors and models, police and judges, teachers, and even an 84-year-old man who just wanted to die as a female.
In 2003, Dr. Biber retired as the malpractice license became too expensive. He passed the practice on to Dr. Marcy Bowers, who is a former patient and gynecological surgeon. During an interview, Marcy Bowers detailed Dr. Stanley Biber's lasting impact. I think he put the operation on the world map. He made it safe, reproducible and functional, and he brought happiness to an awful lot of people. And when you wanted a voice of reason, he was always there. Dr. Biber's reputation is detailed in the Trinidad History Museum, as well as on October 10th, which has been named National Stanley Biber Day. Not only did Dr. Biber create a medical frontier through his surgical practices, but he also established a social frontier, as he was one of the first doctors to openly admit to not only what he was doing, but also to the acceptance of his patients. Dr. Biber changed well over 3,000 lives. His medical and social frontier paved the way for well over 9,000 gender-affirming surgeries to happen in the United States per year. Surgery has risen with the expansion of insurance coverage for the procedures. The number of transgender adults in the United States now being an estimated 1.4 million. More than 4,100 such surgeries had been done between 2000 and 2014, according to an analysis of medical records in a nationwide database. It was also found that the number of gender-affirming surgeries increased nearly fourfold during that time. The Affordable Care Act banned discrimination on the basis of gender identity, leading to an increase in insurance coverage for gender-affirming surgeries. Data also showed that no deaths from gender-affirming surgeries had been recorded. That finding challenged critics who say the surgeries are not safe.